Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida, on this Tuesday, the 26th of November, 2024. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Daily Offices team, the ministry that brings you morning prayer live every weekday morning on Zoom, and later in the day at Gone Good Shepherd's social media channels, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, the prayer page of our website, goodsheponline.org. So good morning, Pam. Good morning, Joan. And good morning, Wendy. So glad that you are here with me this morning to celebrate morning prayer here in Good Shepherd to Cuesta. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Good morning, Sherry. Thank you for joining us this morning. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm this morning is Psalm 100, Jubilate Deo. We shall say the Jubilate together in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. We have a trio of psalms this morning, Psalms 121, 122, and 123. We shall say the psalms together in unison with a slight pause between them. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. 
for there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the derision of the proud. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Now, a little word is noteworthy for Zechariah. The Zechariah, who wrote chapters 1 through 8 of Zechariah, was a contemporary of Ezra and Nehemiah at the time of the return from the Babylonian exile. He, along with uh, others, were strong proponents of restoring the temple and also of uh, making worship. Uh, much, much more true to uh, to uh, the way of ways of the past. However, the reading we're reading today is from what I would call Second Zechariah, and it was written much later, uh, probably in the late fourth and early third centuries BCE, uh, around the time of the conquest of Alexander the Great. In fact, in, in chapter 9, which is the very first chapter of the second part of Zechariah, uh, they mention the Greeks, which were just not on the radar screen until about 350 <laughs> BCE. So, but the first and the second parts of Zechariah, both of them are uh, somewhat ap apocalyptic in their nature, and there are symbols and signs we'll see today. There are two staffs that have names today. And, uh, and so that is what links them together. Incidentally, as you listen to this, 30 shekels of silver is the price to, of a slave. Okay, so a reading from the book of Zechariah. Thus says the Lord my God, be a shepherd of the flock doomed to slaughter. Those who buy them kill them and go unpunished. And those who sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I have become rich. And their own shepherds have no pity on them. For I will no longer have pity on the inhabitants of the earth, says the Lord. I will cause them, every one, to fall each into the hand of a neighbor and each into the hand of the king, and they shall devastate the earth, and I will deliver no one from their hand. So on behalf of the sheep dealers, I became a shepherd of the flock doomed to slaughter. I took two staffs, one I named favor, the other I named unity, and I tended the sheep. In one month, I disposed of the three shepherds, for I had become impatient with them, and they also detested me. So I said, I will not be your shepherd. What is to die, let it die. What is to be destroyed, let it be destroyed. And let those who are left devour the flesh of one another. I took my staff favor and broke it, annulling the covenant that I had made with all the peoples. So it was annulled on that day, and the sheep dealers who were watching me knew that it was the word of the Lord. I then said to them, 
If it seems right to you, give me my wages, but if not, keep them. So they weighed out as my wages, 30 shekels of silver. Then the Lord said to me, throw it into the treasury, this lordly price at which I was valued by them. So I took the 30 shekels of silver and threw them into the treasury in the house of the Lord. Then I broke my second staff, unity, annulling the family ties between Judah and Israel. Then the Lord said to me, take once more the implements of a worthless shepherd. For I am now raising up in the land a shepherd who does not care for the perishing, or seek the wandering, or heal the maimed, or nourish the healthy, but devours the flesh of the fat ones, tearing off even their hoofs. O oh, my worthless shepherd who deserts the flock, may the sword strike his arm and his right eye. Let his arm be completely withered, his right eye utterly blinded. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond to our reading from 2nd Zechariah with the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's second reading is from the Gospel according to Luke. Uh, and uh, I'll just make a, a small comment. So Luke and the Acts of the Apostles are basically two volumes of the same book, uh, both written by Luke the physician. And uh, in the Gospel according to Luke, uh, the, uh, the action starts in Galilee with Jesus' ministry, and Jesus performs all sorts of works, uh, wonders, uh, healings, etc., in Galilee. And then he turns to go towards Jerusalem, and of course, Palm Sunday and the crucifixion. In the Acts of the Apostles, the early church starts in Jerusalem, where Jesus left off, and much of the early action is in Jerusalem, and then it turns out with Paul's journeys and goes out to the ends of the earth. So Luke Acts this two-volume set, it has a sort of a trajectory to it. You start away from Jerusalem, you make your way to Jerusalem, and then you go out from Jerusalem. So in any event, today, uh, or a couple of readings ago, Jesus started to turn towards Jerusalem. We heard that more today. So a reading from the gospel according to Luke. Jesus took the twelve aside and said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked and insulted and spat upon. After they have flogged him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. But the disciples understood nothing about all these things. In fact, what was said was hidden from them, and they did not grasp 
what was said. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in the front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, praised God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond to our gospel reading with the Te Deum Laudamus, which we shall say together in unison. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. And now let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. 
Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Collect of the Day is the Collect for Proper 29, Christ the King Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And today we commemorate Isaac Watts, hymn writer, who died in the year 1748. God of truth and grace, you gave Isaac Watts singular gifts to present your praise in verse, that he might write psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs for your church. Give us grace joyfully to sing your praises now and in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for this week, a collect for the mission of Good Shepherd. Loving God, you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, that we might have hope of eternal life and the Holy Spirit to sustain us in our faith in you. Give us grace to be a beacon of that faith, hope, and love in this community, that we may radiate the transforming power of your love to everyone, everywhere, who live and reign together, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Kinkiizi, Uganda, the Right Reverend Dan Zoreka Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and his wife Kate, and our companion diocese, Remembering today especially the Diocese of the Dominican Republic, the Right Reverend Moises Quezata Mota Bishop. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Mike, Zan, Celeste, Joan, Ned, Mindy, Renee, Tom, Bill and Renee, Cindy, and Kate. We pray also today for our Connect Ministries, remembering especially a taste of Good Shepherd, that our members may come together to share, celebrate, and promote their ministries, and Bridge Club, that members of Good Shepherd may gather to enjoy a fun, an intellectually stimulating pastime. And now, if you wish to say it with me, let us say together the Good Shepherd Parish Prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, 
make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my might, heart, and mind to discern what you would have me do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your own prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. And I would like to begin today by uh, giving thanks for our upcoming Thanksgiving uh, holiday. And uh, here's hoping that you will be gathering with friends and family. And if you, and if you can't, just remember that uh, the uh, Owls Ministry is going to be hosting uh, a uh, is going to be hosting a potluck Thanksgiving meal at two o'clock on Thanksgiving Day. So this is our collect for our collect for Thanksgiving Day. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and for the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And in conjunction with Thanksgiving, uh, you may know that uh, Good Shepherd is a host of the event called Run for the Pies. Registration begins at 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, it goes from 11 to 6 today and tomorrow and on the morning of the event. So uh, people are asked to bring a canned good when they register for our food pantry. So here's hoping that our pantry will be overflowing and well-stocked as we enter the holiday season. And Thanksgiving is also the most heavily traveled weekend of the entire year. So uh, why don't we pray for travelers? O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose fil glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular all those dear to us who are traveling to visit uh, uh, family and friends uh, and coming to visit us, perhaps, and especially let us pray for Sanford and Tony as they uh, enjoy their vacation in Sweden. Surround all of them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Joan gives thanksgiving uh, for uh her daughter Lori in North Carolina, who is now home, to continue resting and healing of the small upper small intestine hepatic tube. Uh, and she says on another note that Judy and she are now better and they're healing from the Nora virus. Okay. In any event, good that everybody is uh, getting better. So why don't we pray? Why don't we give thanks for the, the beginning of a recovery? O oh Lord, your compassions never fail, and your mercies are new every morning. We give you thanks for giving our sisters, Lori, Judy, and Joan, both relief from pain and hope of health renewed. Continue in them, we pray, the good work you have begun, that they daily increasing in bodily strength and rejoicing in your goodness. May so order their lives and conduct that they may always think and do those things that please you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
May God the Father bless them, God the Son heal them, God the Holy Spirit give them strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard their bodies, save their souls, and bring them safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In uh, our cycle of prayer for uh, the South Florida Haiti Project, today we pray for the availability of medications and health care for those of need of them, who in need of them in Bondo in particular and Haiti in general. And let us also pray for peace in the Holy Land, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, and Lebanon, and for other areas of the world torn by war or civil strife, especially Haiti, Ukraine, Sudan, and Congo. And now let us continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me for morning prayer to begin this day, this Tuesday, November 26th, a beautiful day here in Southeast Florida. Uh, may you have a blessed Thanksgiving week. And as you go into the world today and greet your neighbor, be kind to him or her. One never knows what another is going through in this life. Amen.